Okay, so only most of you won't want to watch this. Only the ones who asked are. As promised, I've finally gotten a chance to piece together this video, which is a response to the numerous questions about my exact process of how I take a concept out of my head and turn it into a pattern that can be cut on a laser. Even if you've only been watching it for a short time, you've seen that I fully incorporated laser cutting and engraving into my work. And taking a rough sketch from paper to a precision cut piece of leather is a bit of a process. And let me note, I'm not saying my particular process is the right way. There's actually several ways of doing this. This is just the way that works for me and the one that I use. For all you digital designers out there, if you're watching this and see me doing something inefficiently or you just know of a different or easier way, shout it out in the comments. Uh, the concept here is for us to all learn. So my friend asked if I could make a shoulder holster for his Breda Centurion. So that's going to be the subject of this video. Now, I originally thought that the construction of it would be similar to my Doc Holliday rig that I made a little while back. You can see here it's got a skirt on the back, and there is a separate piece that goes up and over, forming the holster itself. Um, funny enough, this uh, this actually almost fits, but it's not going to quite work for this, this pistol. So you can see my first step here is to make a kind of a proof of concept, a, a really rough mock-up out of construction paper here. I, this is technically cardstock. The next step would be to scan it, but before I do that, I'm going to make a quick sketch of an exact one inch square on here, just as a scale check. Nothing special here, this is just a basic flatbed printer scanner combo that probably most of you already have in your home. Since both my pattern and the inside lid of the scanner are white, I'm going to just throw a piece of dark felt on here for contrast. So I do all my actual design work in Adobe Illustrator. This is a vector graphics app that you can buy a subscription for. It's part of the vast array within the Adobe Creative Suite. It's one of the tools I use professionally at my day job. However, if you're looking for a free option, Inkscape is another alternative. There's no shortage of videos actually teaching how to use Illustrator, so I'm not going to do that. I will identify and touch on the handful of basic tools that I use. Illustrator and Inkscape share the same basic functions, so this should apply to both apps. Once I have the scanned image on a separate layer, I'm going to use the pen tool to trace the pattern. This is probably the most important tool to master in my opinion. Uh, it's probably also the hardest one to, to learn how to use. I've had a few people ask if it's possible to just scan or take a picture of a pattern you've drawn and drop that into something like Lightburn and have it just be turned into a laser readable file. Um, I played around with this a little bit. The answer is there might be a way of doing it, especially with the AI and some of these apps getting better. However, I would say at this point you may not be happy with the results. And with the amount of time and effort it would take to correct and clean up the files, you might as well just do it this way. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste that shape that I just made there and drag it up onto my top piece. I'm going to adjust the shape a bit here with my pen tool. And then I'm going to introduce the next tool that I most commonly use, that is the Pathfinder tool, that allows you to add and subtract shapes from each other. Just draw a rectangle here, and I'm going to cut off the top of this piece. There you go. This holster will have a welt. Let me go ahead and trace that out here with my pen tool again. I'm going to speed this up just a tad. I'm going to do a copy paste in place of that initial shape that I drew. And let me actually just change the color of that just to see what I'm doing. Okay, I've got an orange one and a red one. So there's actually two of them sitting right on top of each other. Now I'm going to take that welt shape that I just drew and I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool to combine those. And there you go. Now I have my welt. Now my welt's going to be a couple layers thick, so I'm just going to make a couple copies of those. I'm not ready to cut into leather yet. First, I'm going to make a prototype with this 3mm craft foam. 
this makes a good, uh, i.e. a cheaper alternative to leather. Before I can use the file, I've got to export it out as an SVG. A lot of people will be using Lightburn for this part. I do have a subscription for Lightburn, however, I'll be using my P2 laser for this, and Xtool has their own free workspace software that you can use to run their machines. So I've gotten into the habit of using that. They're very similar. Lightburn still seems to have more capabilities, but since I literally only use either of them to run the machines and not design in, well, I'll just go for the free option. As an aside here, uh, for craft foam, the best way i found is to crank up the power all the way up to 100% and then just run it as fast as you can get away with. And it looks like I turned it up a little too fast. The laser didn't quite make it all the way through. So at this point, uh, I discovered two things. First of all, that that front piece, that top piece that was going to make the holster is too short. And number two, I decided that I didn't want to construct the holster this way. Uh, I'm going to do something completely different. No problem, I just outputted another one of the main holster panels here, but I will need it to be shaped slightly differently. So I am going to just make a quick tracing on here of how I want it to be shaped, and then I'll run it through the scanner again. Okay, so this is what it's all about, right? So you have a digital pattern that you can make quick and easy edits to. I am going to just draw with my pen tool uh, another shape here. And I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to speed this up. I'm just going to leave this in real time so you can see how quick I can actually do this. Okay, so I've got those two shapes, and uh, let me just tweak that a little bit. I want those two curves to kind of blend in a little bit better with each other. This looks good. All right. Okay, then Pathfinder. And there's my new shape. There you go. Oh, can you see what's happening here? I'm still running my laser too fast. It doesn't have enough time to actually make it through the craft foam. I'll have to slow it down a little bit more next time. This is looking a little better though. I'm gonna add a protrusion here for the thumb snap. And I'm not even going to scan it. I'm just going to eyeball it directly here on my screen. And again, here I'm just using my pen tool and my Pathfinder to make subtle tweaks and changes and making shapes and combining them together. I mean, you can go all day with this stuff. There. 100 millimeters per second. That's what finally got it to cut through. Okay, I can finally get my mock-up. I'm going to use some spray glue to piece it together. Okay, at this point, I'm liking the balance of it, but you know what? It's just too long. I'm going to do a chop job on it and cut some off.
this feels better. I'm not even going to bother scanning this. I know what I need to do. I just need to cut off about an inch from the front. Of course, this also means I'm going to have to reshape my welt. But what can you do? How about some stitch holes? Uh, it's always convenient when you have a multi-layered stack of leather like this. Have all matching and aligned up stitch holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the offset path function on Illustrator and I'm going to do an offset at 0 0.14. Okay, I realized after editing that this might be confusing. The settings I'm throwing out here come from a trial and error process of me matching the stitching chisels and the needle size I've, I've traditionally used for like everything. You'll have to play around with these yourself to find out which settings work best for you. So, you know, now you know. And then I'm going to take that path and I'm going to give it a stroke weight of three. I'm gonna put the caps at rounded, leave all these the same. I'm gonna hit make it a dashed line. I'm going to have a dash of 0.25 and a gap of 11 point. And since this pattern doesn't really have any sharp corners, your align options here just Pick whichever one looks the best. I'll need a line of stitching right here. And I'm just going to use my eyedropper tool to make that the same as all the rest of the stitches. Okay, this is a technical thing, but I can't leave that dotted line a dotted line. I've got to outline stroke. That turns it from a dotted line into a bunch of circles that the computer can see. Hey, and if any uh, illustrator gurus out there can explain to me why sometimes the dotted line does this when you outline it, I would love to know. Sometimes you get these malformed circles. Uh, it's no big deal. You just have to check for them and uh, just kind of replace them. I want matching holes for my welt stack here. So I'm just going to align my welt piece with my main body panel here. And then I'm going to just kind of drag and select the welt and all the holes within it and do a drag copy here there you go and now I have a welt with matching stitch holes and let me clean this up I don't need stitch holes everywhere so I'm just gonna go through and select all the ones I don't need I don't think I'm gonna need one let me see I'm not gonna need this one come on there you go and I probably won't need this one here Come on. Well, select there. There you go. Okay. And do the same thing with the top piece. Going to line those up and select. Do a drag copy. And there, now my top piece has all aligning and matching stitch holes. Let me delete the panel there. I don't. There you go. Okay. Okay, this isn't necessary, but I like to select everything on a particular piece and make it a compound path. This can help selecting those pieces in Lightburn or Creative Space or whatever you're using to run your machine. It also has the uh, benefit of turning all my stitching dots into little circles. I think they get cut a little bit better this way. And make sure to flip your pieces so that you have your flush side and your grain sides orientated properly. Okay, now I'm ready to actually cut leather. And even here, I'm just using some scrap pieces. You know, uh, we've made our mock-up out of craft foam, but until it's actually made out of leather, uh, you still don't know exactly how it's going to fit. There, there's no stand-in for the real thing. So, uh, again, I'm just going to use some scrap leather for this part just to make sure that everything is jiving. All right, everything looks okay. And actually, the scrap pieces, the leather is actually not that bad. I might just, uh, I might just go with this. So, anyways, here's the start of a more normalized video for me. Uh, so you guys can watch, and I'm gonna cue the soundtrack that I know everyone loves.
Now here's a quick tip. I have a hand press, uh, but I don't have the dies for these particular snaps. But I do have the hand tools for it. Uh, so I can just chalk these up into my drill press and it works just as well. Obviously, this is just the holster part of the shoulder rig. I need to build the rest of it. And if you want to see how the, that comes out looking, you need to check me out on Instagram. I, when I film my project, it basically doubles the amount of time it takes for me to get it done. So I've already had this guy's pistol for quite a while now, and I need to get it back to him. So anyways, if you like the video, make sure to uh, hit that like button, uh, leave a comment, uh, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks again.